Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I, God, shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. And at the time of the tribulation period, they're in captivity. They're on the run. They are public enemy number one among the Antichrist in the nation. They're everywhere, anywhere. They're, they're, they're hiding. I mean, that's not to say there'll be some Jews that will take the Antichrist side. They will receive the mark. I mean, there will be. But, I mean, the threat is, Jesus said, pray that your fight be not in the, in the winter. Pray is not done on the Sabbath. Woe unto the women that are give suck. Woe unto the women that are... I mean, it is this a time called Jacob's Trouble. It's a Jewish time. It's not a Gentile time. It's not a church time. The church has been raptured before the tribulation period. I will also gather all nations. They said all nations. Not excluding America. And we'll bring them down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat and Armageddon. And we'll be interested if that valley is named that later and nobody even knows it. I mean, we've looked at chapter 3. We've seen things that have happened. The gathering of the nations, the United Nations Assembly, and the people don't even realize what they did, according to the Bible. I will plead with them there for my people, Israel. And my heritage, the land of Israel. It's going to be judgment. Whom they have scattered among the nations. Again, they're everywhere. And parted my land. They're doing that today. They've done it. The United Nations has given up the land of Israel. For peace and freedom. You find that in Joel. They have cast lots from my people. That's a form of gambling. It's never voting. And have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they, may, they might drink. And I told you that this child uh, pornography, this child abduction, this child slavery, it's horrible. Yet the Bible speaks about it in Job. Joe 3, verse 4, and yea, what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Those are nations along the Mediterranean Sea. All the coasts of Palestine, Mediterranean Sea. Will ye render me a recompense? And if it recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense on your own head? Listen, Tyre is gone. But the area is still there. Zion is gone, but the area is still there. And, and the, the PLO in the little stretch of land right now that's, that causes trouble to Israel. There's two enemies of God. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. It's all God. Listen, when, in the beginning when God said, let there be the earth and let there be the, the dirt, let there be, you know, the water and all that. And, w and with the minerals of, of the earth, the gold, the silver, the iron, the magnesium, the copper, the, the, the uh, uh, uranium, the coal, the oil, that's all God's. Everything belongs to God. You're taking my silver, my gold, and carry it to your temple. My goodly, pleasant thing. Can you, can you imagine the day that big, fat, belly button Buddha is going to have to give an account for his, his image, his idol? Man, why don't you lose some weight? Doctor told me today, he said, you need to lose weight. Big, fat Buddha needs to lose weight. You see some of those gods in India? They're big and fat. The children, also Judah, and the children of Jerusalem, have ye sold unto the Grecians. Slavery. I mean, we're thinking California just, you know, we, we owe a great debt to the, to the Africans because, you know, the slavery. 
Friend, you better start talking about the slavery of the Jews. You better talk about how they were treated in World War II. Because it's coming back in the tribulation period. They shall sell them to the Sabine, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. There have been times that the Jews have been put in the slave market and no one's bought them. Proclaim this among the Gentiles. Tell the Gentiles. Prepare war and wake up mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near and let them come up. Oh, we're going to have peace. We're going to have peace. The Bible says you're going to have war. You're going to have war. And the Bible speaks of at least two world wars and an intergalactic war. Beat your plowshares into swords. That's what you use on the farm. Your pulling parts into spares. That's what you use on a farm. That's completely opposite of what Isaiah said. That's completely opposite of what the United Nations building puts on their building. But the United Nations has not brought peace. They brought war. They need to put Joel 3.10 on their wall. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Boston strong. Orlando strong. We are the champions. We are the Americans. Your fall. <clears throat> Assemble yourselves, United Nations Assembly. And come all ye heathen, Gentiles. Gather yourselves together round about, judgment. Then it caused the mighty ones to come down, O oh Lord. And the big husky, you know, the, the, the Marines, the SEAL squad, the elite of the elite will stand before God. You know, we had a Memorial Day. And we, you know, how many proclaim a Memorial Day? And how many are those people that are honored Memorial Day are in hell for their rejection of God? And you say, they gave us freedom. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you're going to hate me. God gave us freedom. The very first time the word freedom shows up in the Bible, it says, God said, I'll give you every, and I'm not quoting it correctly, every tree of the garden you may eat freely. That's freedom. That came from God. Put ye in the sickle. That's used for farming. For the harvest is right. Now, that's what Jesus spoke about. The end of the world, the harvest, the angels have sent. Come get you down, for the press is full. It's like into a, a wine press. The fast overflow and their wickedness is great. I read to you out of, out of Genesis in time of Noah, the violence was wicked. The violence was throughout the whole world. Friend, that's going on today. Multitudes and multitudes. That's a lot of people. In the Valley of Decision. For the day of the Lord. There's the second advent. You need to mark that. That's one of the... Uh, for the day, the day of the Lord needs to be marked in your Bible. In that day, there's a couple of expressions like that. There's second advent. <clears throat> Is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their sun shining. That's at the end of the tribulation period. And by the seventh year of the tribulation period, there is no natural light. I don't even know if there's artificial light. With everything that's running around and, and bombing and hailstorms and fires and, and blood and water and Moses and Elijah and the Antichrist and, and the angels and, and these things that have powerful tales. And I mean, when I used to watch the old movies Godzilla, when Godzilla came across, you know, the power went out. I don't know. Now they say computers and that. I don't even know. Unless they come up with a power source. It doesn't need wires and all. Listen, a hurricane comes to America, comes to Haiti, comes through Cuba, and comes through the island. It wipes out the power. It wipes out the power line. 
The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, that's Jerusalem, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. That's Zion's second advent of heaven. And the heaven and the earth shall shake. The earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope. That's Titus 2.13. Titus 2.13 for us, the blessed hope, to come in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Jew, Joel 3.16. you get that? John 3.16 Have you checked all the 3.16's of the Bible? Of the King James Bible? They're quite remarkable. Only God could set it up. Will be the hope of His people, Israel. And the strength of the children of Israel. That Lord is Jesus Christ. When he comes back. Revelation uh, 19. So shall ye know that I am. The I am. The Lord your God. Go back and read uh, Titus 2.13. And what do they call it? That Jehanan. Comma is it? You know, the Lord God and Jesus. And the Jehovah Witnesses say, well, see, here's God. And here's Jesus. They're two separate people. And it's not so. I mean, and could be both. And, you know, I'm sitting here and somebody says... Sally, do you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah, I'll enjoy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But they're not going to bring me a peanut butter sandwich and bring me a jelly sandwich. That don't work. But that's how the Jehovah Witnesses say. Run that back to Ezekiel, uh, uh, the Titus 2.13. Which is my life first. Joel 3.16. That's probably where Paul got it. Where we're reading now. And if he got it from there, you see the Lord, the Lord shall roar, the Lord shall be, there's God, and there's Jesus. So shall you know, I am the Lord your God that dwelleth in Zion. Dwell, that's where Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, my holy mountain, Jerusalem. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. I said, remember that, I said, mark that down, underline it. Because during the tribulation period, Jerusalem called Sodom and Gomorrah. And there shall be no strangers passing through her anymore. Strangers are people that don't know God. People are Gentiles. And shall come to pass in that day. There's another expression to mark in the Bible. That the mountain shall drop down new wine, grape juice. Not intoxicating liquor. It doesn't sit. And he, I believe in even the millennium, if that if the wine sat for a while, I don't think it's going to ferment. Jesus turned the water into wine, but he did not make intoxicating liquor. And was well, John chapter four. You don't read him drinking it. I, I, I've even had people, you know, they, they went, well, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine. I said, that's good. Now let's go there. Find me in the Bible. I don't tell where it is, but find me where it says it in the Bible. And then you find me where it says Jesus drank it. The hill shall flow with milk. Milk is nutrient. You Google milk. And, and there's nutrients. There's calcium. It, it's good for your health. It, uh, milk can help you sleep. Milk can help you not eat so much, I read today. Quite interesting. How oh, the Lord showed me that. Milk is good for the teeth. Milk is something natural from a mother. It doesn't, I mean, it's today. I don't know what sex I am. All right. 
male produce milk. Now, I don't know how they're saying today that men can get pregnant. Men have nipples, but they don't produce milk. I'd like you to go out in the farm and, and, and try to milk a bull. You, you, you ain't going to get nothing. Comes from the mother. The law states that you are not to, to boil the calf or the little baby you in his mother's milk. Which I was told is some kind of uh, false god worship. Idolatry. All the rivers of Judah shall flow with water. All, I've seen all the rivers of Judah shall flow with water. There's going to be no drought. There's going to be no barren land. The rivers are going to be full of water. That's good. That's healthy. We've read throughout the Bible that not only that, that they're going to be filled with fish except for the marshes. The fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord. And from the house of the Lord, the temple, we've already read about Ezekiel. There's that river that flows out of the house of the Lord. There's a temple in the millennium. In the water, the valley of Shittim. Valley. You know, a valley is not going to be really a valley in the millennium. It's going to be going to be fruitful, it's going to be glorious, it's going to be wonderful. Even we've seen the word wilderness in the, in the millennium. <laughs> and ain't the wilderness like today. Egypt shall be desolate, empty. And yet we read one of the prophets say that if they don't bring or come at the feast of the tabernacle, they're not going to get any rain. Egypt's going to be there in the millennium. Egypt has been an enemy of Israel, and yet the Egypt of Joseph helped Israel. The Egypt in the time of Abraham helped Abraham. Edom, that's Esau, the brother of shall be a desolate wilderness. Now Edom is just, just cursed. They have been an enemy against Israel all along, and all they that, that, that curse Israel shall be cursed. Now here's a desolate wilderness in the millennium that there's nothing there. There are There is a possibility in the millennium that there are places outside the land of Israel they could be wasteland. Depending on what the nation's done with Israel. I mean, have you seen the pictures of, of, of the Middle East? It's sandy. It's, it, it's barren. Why? Because they don't help Israel. They don't acknowledge Israel. They curse Israel. For the violence against the children of Judah... And, and what Edom has done is, when Babylon came into Judah, when the Judeans left and ran away from, from the armies of Babylon and the Chaldean, Edom caught them and turned them over to Nebuchadnezzar. I think Hosea talks, uh, uh, yeah. No, not Hosea. Uh, Habakkuk, I think, is the book that deals with Edom. Might be um, Micah. No, one of the books deals with Edom because they have shed innocent blood in their land. That looks like the land of Judah. Edom's come in and killed Jews. Well, that's definitely a curse. But Judah shall dwell forever. Well, what do you do when you say God's all finished with the Jew? What do you do with that verse? 
I'll tell you what you do with it. You change it. You Hebrew it. You scarly it. That's not what God said. That's not what he means. In the original, a better rending. What do you believe, Tyler? I believe Israel is God's people forever, forever to be, forever to be on, forever, for all eternity. And Jerusalem, from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood. One of the bloods that Judah had and Israel had, they were killing their babies to Moab. God ain't going to clean the blood of, of abortion in America except by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if not by the blood of Jesus Christ, those souls involved with the murder of those babies will pay their price in the lake of fire that burns forever. The Bible says, not in the land of Israel, in, in the land of where Cain and Abel were. He says, Cain, the blood of your brother cries from the ground. Now we just saw a wilderness in verse 19. Wouldn't it be interesting? Now this, this is not doctrine. You can throw it out the window. I'm just making suggestions. But what if we go into the millennium? What's it? Yeah, you remember that uh, this used to be called America. Oh. You know, I'm talking to a couple missionaries that support in Japan or Haiti or Mexico. Oh, okay. What's that dry spot over there? Oh, this used to be New York. And that's where the United Nations was. You know, they curse Israel. Oh. Okay. Now I'm just saying, what's this patch right here? Why is this dark and has no light? And well, let me see. Let me check. And call the owner. Call the owner of that city, or, or the merchant of that city, or the, the king of that city. And he goes, "Oh, right there is where they it was it used to be what they call an abortion clinic. That's where much blood of babies were killed." And they did not repent. They did not believe in the Lord Jesus. That ground is barren. That land still cries out for mercy. One day, the heavens and earth are going to flee. All will be judged. Don't worry. The unsolved murders, the unsolved crimes, and what happened to Amelia Earnhardt? What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? I was falsely accused. I'm in jail. I didn't do it. And all that is going to be put before the judge of all the earth. Save the Lord. You may not have been guilty for that crime, but you've been guilty of other crimes. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. He ain't dwelling there now. You know who's dwelling now according? Allah. On the very site of the Temple Mount of the Most Holy of Holies. It's called the Dumb of the Rock. There's a rock there. Supposedly Muhammad or something went up, whatever it was. I don't care. But that God is called Allah. Allah means the God, small g. You know what my Bible says? When all is finished, you know what my Bible says is gonna who's gonna be there? The Lord. The I am. I spoke about Ezekiel's temple that there's not a curtain, there's a door. 